for a long time, tenecta place has been had been used in cardiology, and it it is much simpler to use. Uh, and as you your viewers will know, it's a modified version of Alta Place. So it's 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 you know effectively very similar from the pharmacology perspective. Uh, however, usage in stroke has been limited because we haven't had good studies to support it. A number of small studies were done. I think essentially that the pivotal study that led to change for us was the ACT trial. It was published in 2022 in The Lancet, and it was led from Calgary. Uh, my colleague, B. Joy Menon, was the principal investigator, but we played a big role in supporting it, Mary Lou and I, uh, from the Alberta network. Uh, and about half the patients were actually enrolled from Alberta. Uh, but the study was run across Canada, and fundamentally it showed that the um, tenecteplase was non-inferior to alteplase for the treatment of acute ischemic stroke. Um, and in fact, the direction of effects slightly favored tenecteplase with no, um, no difference in harm, for example. And recently, we've seen the data from a test 2 which is a, a very similar trial um, which was run in the United Kingdom. Uh, it's just, it has completed enrollment. It's not yet published, but it's in its sort of data cleanout phase and et cetera. And those data were presented in abstract form at the World Stroke Congress, uh, showing again that tenecteplase was essentially just as good. It was non-inferior and maybe slightly better in terms of direction of effect. Um, interestingly, uh, Dr. Muir, who presented those data from Glass, he's from Glasgow, did a um, and sort of a, 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 a quick and dirty meta-analysis of existing trials. And it actually looks like if you combine all the data from the trials, tenecteplase is actually superior to alteplase for the treatment of stroke. And so these were the background um, data that, that led us to make the change that uh, we reported on and Mary Lou reported on at the World Stroke Meeting. So in terms of tenecteplase, uh, one of its major benefits is that it's a bolus dose drug. You don't have to fiddle around with an infusion afterwards. It's been used in cardiology, like Dr. Hill said, for a very long time. And so our nursing staff is very familiar with how to reconstitute it, how to administer it. So it just made a it just was a natural kind of transition. It made sense. And in terms of our emergency medical services teams, as they're doing the interfacility transfers, which are sometimes required, now that they no longer have to do or deal with an infusion, it was much sim simpler um, in terms of what has to happen for the transitions. So for those reasons, that it kind of really helped us move this project along here in Alberta. So uh, in terms of the logistics, one of the very first things that we had to do was get the appropriate approvals. So we approached our provincial pharmacy team to review the data that was available, review the ACT trial, make sure that it made sense uh, for us. And then they helped us put together a case for our executive leadership team to review and approve the transition province-wide. One of the benefits of working here is that we are one health authority, which means that if we decide to do something provincially, we have the support of all the different zones. So that was the first step. The second step was really around the communication and the coordination piece. So um, in order to communicate this out, we worked fairly closely with pharmacy because it was a two-phase transition. Phase one of the transition saw the rural sites go live first uh, with the use of Tenecta Place. We've got 15 of those across Alberta. Um, and while they were doing that, they were actually diverted their um, stroke allotted Alta Place stocks to the urban centers. So we have two comprehensive stroke centers that offer both EVT and lytic treatment. And so uh, as the urban centers were using up the uh, the Alta Place, the urban areas were starting to transition onto Tenecta Place. And then once the Alta Place stocks were depleted, we transitioned the larger centers to using Tenecta Place as well. Now, part of the communication really relied on our fantastic stroke network here. So we worked really closely with our stroke coordinators from each of our zones, and we developed communication around the importance, um, highlighting the differences in um, dosing between the cardiac dose versus the stroke dose, and uh, just informing the, the different teams across our province about the transition plan would look like when they would go live and um, the, the plan with pharmacy. And then finally, a big component of this transition was around the education. So we developed an e-learning module. We developed podcasts to look at uh, what does this mean for your setting? Why are we doing this? What does it mean for you? How do you reconstitute the drug? How do you administer it? 
weight band dosing, all that kind of information was in our podcast. And we also updated all of our order sets. So whether the, um, you know, the ones that are available on the electronic platform, as well as the ones that are available on the paper base, because some sites have not gone live yet on electronic charting. And then finally, we developed things like um, posters to highlight the differences between all the place and connected place. So all of that was put together, packaged and distributed through our zone programs, who then supported the sites to go live with the transition. Anything to add, Dr. Hill? No, that's great. Uh, I mean, it just took a lot of coordinating to get everyone sorted out. I think the 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 one sort of um, both fun and practical thing that happened was that we we made an effort to use up existing supply of Altaplace. Um, as you may be aware, it, it you know obviously it comes with a cost, and um, and and so using it up meant that we, what we did was we started, we, we sort of had a, a lead phase where we got the rural sites using to next place first, as Mary Lou was explaining. And, and then we uh, concentrated the remaining Alta plays in the uh, academic centers, the sort of central centers, because their usage was at a higher rate. So that allowed us to use up the existing Alta plays. And then we finally, everyone finally switched over and it was about what, three or four months later in February of, um, of 23. So, uh, so yeah, now we've got everybody on to using the next place for stroke throughout the province. The advantage we have in, in Alberta is we, we do have a, a centralized, uh, structure and that's obviously a little bit of accident of history, but it allows for, it, it allows for things like procurement of drugs and centralized access to, uh, things to be, to be sorted out with, with the, with a single group. So what needed to be done were the central side, which was, which was drug supply issues and make sure we were managing that. So we were able to do that with the central, uh, pharmacies, and then they are, the, they're then internally communicating to distribute drug uh or to in our as i as i mentioned earlier we we had to move alta plays from the periphery the rural areas into the central urban areas so we had to move uh existing supply and then make sure that the uh, other uh, places had supply of tenecta plays and then we had to educate people of course right so part of this was about teaching people now i would say that was substantially helped by the fact that uh, we had done the trial here so the fact that we had done the trial uh people were already familiar with uh with using tenecta plays at the stroke level and as mary lou indicated because of the the penetrance of tenecta plays as the dominant lytic used in cardiology for acute coronary syndromes many uh, uh existing emergency room nurses and that kind of thing were already familiar with the use of tenecta plays how to manage it how to monitor that kind of thing of course some things were different uh again as mary lou said the dosing is different so we had to we had to educate teach uh we had to change our electronic order sets right so that the constituents of people that we had to interact with included all of the treating teams, so physicians, nurses, et cetera, both in the emergency departments and on the wards. We have a stroke ambulance in Edmonton. Uh, we had to interact with them to make sure they were aware. Uh, we did some teaching of paramedics so they knew what was happening. We had to teach pharmacy um, and make sure the pharmacies were all engaged on this. And then we had to interact with our tech teams for electronic order sets, make sure they were all in place. And, and in those places where uh, we needed backup paper order sets. We had to change paper order sets so that the right doses and names were there. And then I think finally, um, you know, one of the things we were we were most concerned about was potential dosing errors. So the cardiac dose of tenecteplase is double what the stroke dose is. And so we did some follow up testing on that. Do you want to talk about that, Mary Lou? Because because we did some follow up checking on on dose and potential dosing errors. We did. So we looked at our patient um, safety reporting system. It's voluntary here in Alberta, but we did take a look at it for the period of time. I think we looked at it uh, between May of 2022 all the way to, or sorry, when we first transitioned. So November of 2022 to February of 2023. And we found to date that there have been no adverse events reported uh, pertaining to dosing errors. Um, so we're very happy to see that. And, and like you were saying, Dr. Hill, I think a big part of this was communication with the various partners. So the uh, document that was drafted and put together to highlight those differences between the dosing, I think made a big impact. Um, we worked fairly closely with, uh, you know, sister SEMs. So we, we, we um, 
distributed the the announcement, I guess, or the information package very broad, very widely to get to all those key partners. So whether you're a physician practicing in a rural area or you're a stroke neurologist practicing in one of our comprehensive stroke centers, we made sure that you got that package. Same with nursing, with our EMS staff. Um, so, so it was fairly broad distribution, broad communication. So we are actually planning to do an evaluation at the one year point, which is coming up here fairly shortly to look at things like um, uptake, to look at things like uh, dosing errors uh, and and those kinds of things. I mean, we've already uh, after Congress and even before Congress, we've had, you know, um, different health authorities from across Canada at least reach out to us to borrow some of the materials that we've developed, whether it's the podcasts or the educational modules or the posters. Um, and we've had multiple, numerous conversations just as, uh, you know, the step-by-step of how we were able to achieve this here in Alberta.